I'm going to read to you the story of the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Now, every time you hear the Sorcerer say, Turn the page! Be sure you do. Long, long ago, there lived a sorcerer, a wise old wizard who could weave the most marvelous magic spells. He could turn princes into field mice, pebbles into pure gold, and he could make himself disappear, presto, in a puff of pale blue powder. Turn the page! The sorcerer lived in a castle high above the River Rhine. The castle had tall towers, twisted turrets, and a maze of vaulted passageways which led to a deep, dank cellar. Turn the page! The cellar was the sorcerer's workshop. One side of the cellar was lined with shelves of musty, dusty, leather-bound books. By far the most important book of all was an enormous volume called Complete Magic Spells and Incantations. It contained the sorcerer's secrets, all his charms and conjurations, all his rites and rituals, and all his symbols and secret words. This book stood alone on the top shelf, where it was guarded day and night by an old green-eyed owl. The book was always locked, and the sorcerer always wore the key around his neck. Turn the page. On the other side of the cellar was the sorcerer's laboratory. There stood the sorcerer's kill, his cosmic oven, and the distillery where he made secret chemical concoctions. And there, too, were all the other tools of the sorcerer's trade, cauldrons and kettles. Flagons and flasks, alentiers and ampullars, bubbling beakers and vapor-filled vessels, and piles of phosphorescent stones ready to be pulverized into magic powders and potions. In the middle of the workshop was a water tub. Every day the tub had to be filled. Heavy buckets of water had to be brought all the way up the steep stone steps which led from the River Rhine. Turn the page. Carrying all those heavy buckets was the job of the sorcerer's apprentice, a frisky, likable, but sometimes lazy lad named Humboldt. Humboldt wanted to be a sorcerer too, someday, and so he worked at the castle and returned for lessons in magic. Humboldt loved the lessons, but he hated the chores. He hated the sweeping and cleaning and rubbing and scrubbing. Most of all, he hated having to carry bucket after bucket of water up the steep stone steps. Humboldt preferred to skip and sing, to chase squirrels or play with the sorcerer's cat, or just to sit by the river bank, daydreaming and watching the beautiful Rhine flow through the countryside. The sorcerer knew this, for he was wise in the ways of lazy boys. And whenever he caught Humboldt loafing or napping or making up excuses, the sorcerer made him work twice as hard. Turn the page! None of Humboldt's mumbling or grumbling could change the sorcerer's mind. An apprentice must work! An apprentice must learn! An apprentice must earn his magic powers, said the sorcerer. Magic is a powerful tool, my boy. Far too powerful to use unless you know how to use it wisely. Sorcery is far more than casting a spell. You will see someday. One day, the sorcerer was called to a meeting in the Black Forest. Before going, he climbed the library ladder and copied some words out of the big book of magic. Then he said to Humboldt, All the fissures and wise men from far and near have called a conclave. I must join them. While I am gone, guard the castle and do your tasks. Then I return. I expect to see all the cauldrons scrubbed, all the brass beakers rubbed, or not one speck of dirt upon the floor. Most important, I expect to find the water tub filled all the way up. To the brim, Humboldt. 
And I don't expect you to stop working till you've finished all your chores. Now turn the page. Then the sorcerer covered himself with his cloak and mumbled a few magic words. And disappeared. And a puff of pale blue powder which promptly settled all over the furniture and the floor. As if things aren't bad enough, grumbled Humboldt. He makes more work for me. That isn't fair. He has all the fun and I do all the dirty work. Why should I slave all day when the master could cast one magic spell and have all the chores done in an instant? Magic's a much easier way. And much more fun, too. Turn the page. Hopelessly, Humboldt looked around at the dirt and dust. And as he looked, a shiny object caught his eye. There, on the sorcerer's work table, was the gold key to the big book of magic. The sorcerer had been in such a hurry, he had forgotten it. What luck! Humboldt grabbed the key. Then he looked at the top library shelf to make sure the old owl was asleep. It was. Quickly, Humboldt steadied the library ladder and climbed to the top. His hands shook with excitement as he unlocked the big red and gold book. Making as little noise as possible, Humboldt flipped through the parchment pages. There were circles and stars and mysterious symbols. And most of the words were in a language Humboldt couldn't understand. Then he saw, under the heading, Practical Magic. Broom magic. How to make a stick fulfill all the wishes of your will. That means the broom will do anything I ask, thought Humboldt happily. So he said the words over and over till he knew them by heart. Turn the page. Then he closed the book, fastened his eyes on the old straw broom in the corner of the cellar, and called out. Sharom ta varom ba o broom perk. Bring water and do all my work. Hearing the noise, the old owl awakened with a flurry and a flapping of wings and batted the boy off the ladder. The ladder crashed and broke in two. But luckily, Humboldt landed unhurt, cushioned by the sorcerer's stuffed crocodile. Humboldt lay there stunned. At first, nothing happened. Had he said the wrong magic words? Turn the page. No. Look. The broom moved. Then it flipped on its end. Hop, hop, hooray! The magic words were right. The broom was beginning to work. Humboldt pointed to a water bucket. Hop, hop, the broom hopped over, bent, and picked up the bucket. Then it hopped across the cellar floor, out the castle door, down the steep stone steps to the river Rhine. At the water's edge, the broom tipped, dipped the bucket into the water, and filled it. Then it turned and hopped all the way back up the steep stone steps. Turns a page! Without stopping, the broom carried the bucket into the castle and poured the water into the tub. Then it started all over again. It hopped to the door and began hobbling and bobbling and thumping and bumping down to the river bank. Turns a page! Hooray! Humboldt shouted with delight. I did it! I did it! I made the magic work for me! Humboldt hugged the sorcerer's cat and started dancing and singing around the room. Humboldt kept on singing and dancing, and the broom kept on hobbling and bobbling, and the water kept on rising in the tub. Then Humboldt forgot all about the water tub for a while. He patted the sorcerer's pet snakes and salamanders. He played marbles with the sorcerer's magic stones. He even made hot tea on the sorcerer's cosmic oven. And why not? His master was away, and the work was being done. 
no one would even know. Turn the page. All at once, Humboldt noticed that the water was up to the brim of the tub. Stop, broom, that's enough. Go back to your corner, he called. But the broom didn't stop. It kept right on hopping. It kept right on thumping and bumping down the steep stone steps and back again with buckets of water. And it kept right on emptying the buckets into the tub, which by now was overflowing. Water trickled over the rim and ran down the sides. Water drenched the rug and sloshed the floor and made a big sloppy puddle by the cellar door. The sorcerer's cat, who hated to get her paws wet, yowled in rage. Turn the page. Humboldt was frightened. Stop, broom, he cried out again. Broom, you've got to stop. Do as I say, broom. Obey. But the broom didn't stop. It kept right on hobbling and bobbling and bringing more water. The water rose higher and higher. The puddle by the door became a pond. The fire in the oven went out with a hiss. Only the salamanders, swimming and swishing their tails in the floodwaters, were happy. Turn the page. Humboldt couldn't stop what he had started. And he couldn't look in the magic book again because the ladder was broken. He was frantic. Whoa! Oh, misery! He whined. What will my master say? What will he do when he sees what I've done? Maybe he'll turn me into a toad, or throw me out, or do something terrible. Oh, why did I look in a magic book? If only I can remember some of the magic words, maybe the broom will stop. Hoping they were like the words that had started the broom working, Humboldt called out, Sarum ta varum ba. Old broom, stop your hopping, do as I say. Nothing happened, so he tried again. Sharom ta varum ba. Go back, broom, stop hopping, you must obey. But the broom didn't stop. It kept right on hobbling and bobbling and bringing buckets of water. No other combination of words worked either. Not even saying the varumba before the sharum ta. Not anything. The water was now waist high. The cat was climbing the furniture and the snakes were slithering up the draperies. Scared and soaked to the skin, Humboldt knew he had to do something to stop the broom. He grabbed the sorcerer's axe. Turns a page. And when the broom came back with still another bucket of water, Humboldt lifted the axe high. Crack! Whack! He cut the broom in two. The room was silent. Ah, broom, I've got you at last, Humboldt cried out. Got you for good. Your magic won't get me into any more trouble. But even as he said it, something amazing and unbelievable and horrible happened. The two pieces of the broom quivered. Then they both tipped, flipped over, and started hopping. Then each of them picked up a bucket and went bumping and thumping down the steep stone steps to the River Rhine. Even more awful, all the broom splinters did the same thing. Soon there was a procession of hundreds of brooms, big and little, and in between, all hobbling and bobbling, all thumping and bumping, all bringing buckets of water from the river. Turns a page. By now, the flood had reached the top shelf of the bookcase. Humboldt was swimming for his life and trying to catch the magic book, bobbing always just out of reach. The cat and the owl were clinging to the chandelier and screeching in fury. Cauldrons were slamming and kettles were banging. All the magic powders and potions were washed into the floodwaters, turning them pink and purple and gentian violet. And still all the brooms kept hobbling and bobbling and bringing water. Soon water was everywhere, whirling, swirling, curling into whirlpools, rushing, gushing, pushing the animals, drowning, surrounding, pounding the furniture. Humboldt's fingers on the mantletop were slowly, steadily slipping, slipping. Help! Humboldt cried. Help, master, I'm going down! Help, master, I'm going to drown! Tons of peach. Suddenly, there was a blinding flash of light. 
presto, in a puff of pale blue powder, the sorcerer appeared at the top of the steps. He bellowed angrily. Fight! Ta! Shut fight! Ta! All from to the corner! Cesar! Slowly, the water subsided. Slowly, Humboldt floated to the floor. Slowly, everything became as it had been. Ma master it was only a joke, Humboldt muttered feebly. P -p Please don't punish me. Turn the page. Ha, said the sorcerer, his eyes flashing fire. Then he pointed to the water bucket. Waterlogged and bone-weary, the sorcerer's apprentice walked to the corner. He bent to pick up the empty bucket. And as Humboldt bent, the broom in the corner tipped and flipped over. Slap, whack, bang, crack. It gave Humboldt four sharp whacks on the backside, which sent the sorcerer's apprentice flying all the way down the steep stone steps to the River Rhine. And that was that.